All right, today I want to talk about an issue that is undoubtedly going to ruffle a few feathers, but I believe it to be a pressing current phenomenon that warrants an in-depth discussion because rather than slowly disappearing or receding away from the perceived precipice, it is apparently escalating every day to what can only be assumed as a point of total meltdown. The topic is the fallacy of toxic gamer entitlement and a recently emerging narrative that I would go so far as to say is an inverse mentality of toxic developer entitlement. Now, to be very clear before really diving in, there are always exceptions to any and every generalization. I'll be making some broad strokes claims and comparisons today that will have numerous individual examples that go against their framework, but exceptions often prove the rule rather than disprove it. We are a product of what has been done to us. That is not just true of any one individual group of people, that is generally a constant for the human race. Human beings are largely a product of their environment and the circumstances inflicted upon them, such as upbringing, education, physical or mental exercise, and many more categories as well, that are all combined to create a sum total of who we are and how we act. If a child is raised to believe in the existence of extraterrestrial life, for example, that is often what they will believe in long after the departure of whatever voice or body was projecting that message. It's not an unbreakable rule, but it is safer to expect that an educated mindset will be long-lasting if it is imparted upon someone during their developmental stages. Deliberate education, however, is not the focus for today. The main point is unintended Pavlovian conditioning. Pavlov's dog is a world-famous experiment in which a dog was given food after the sound of a bell. Through repetition, which in this case was very deliberate, the dog associated the bell with the food and would begin to salivate at the sound even when food itself was not visible. This is a phenomenon that is present in many different areas of life, and though the comparisons will be somewhat abstract, I guess, given the sentient nature of human beings and their ability to construct complex reactions and responses based on very little input at all, the same effect can be seen in gaming, which has landed us smack dab in the center of a schismatic set of interactions between consumers and developers. Accepting that gaming consumers are a product of what has been done to them, we need to retroactively examine the trends that have now been advancing uninterrupted for years within the gaming industry. I previously published a video discussing the complete history of microtransactions, and will heavily draw upon that same research now for the purpose of this analysis. To condense the summary as much as possible, what started with one or two games became almost every single AAA title, where once a flat price was all that was required for full product enjoyment, microtransactions, loot boxes, and season passes invaded the market with a level of ferocity that has now upset even the near prehistoric governmental regulation bodies of over a dozen nations, and the end result is a conditioned response of skepticism and animosity towards mainstream games that has risen to a point I would speculate is more volatile than any any previous bracket of time in gaming history. A newly established trend is waiting for the initial review cycle of a game to pass by before layering in predatory monetization systems that would have resulted in a worse launch day reception overall. This, among many other examples, displays how gamers are being conditioned to expect the worst possible outcome, and anticipate, even on a subconscious level, that they will be deceived and taken advantage of. This brings us to the most recent and possibly one of the best examples to date of that exact circumstance. Apex Legends is an enigmatic game to say the very least. Its launch was almost completely unannounced and a new form of influencer marketing was undertaken by EA and Respawn Studios to produce a wave of global interest in the title designed to catapult it to a competitive level with the current industry giant, Fortnite. The result was temporarily effective for a little bit, but soon after the game came crashing back down. However, despite a lack of meaningful content updates, a recent monetization initiative perfectly exemplified the very same phenomenon gamers have come to expect as a product of industry norms. Apex Legends came out with a new event in which the crown jewel of its cosmetic items would effectively cost gamers over $200 to obtain. To put that into perspective here, a few cosmetic skins, some of which really are not visually impressive or significant at all, cost more than three alternative full-priced $60 games combined. On top of this, when the community vocally pushed back against the event, the response only fueled the fire. Rather than tracking back across their idiotic and greedy event framework to reorganize the content in a way that was something other than lazy, greedy, and despicable, Respawn opted to simply allow players to purchase specific cosmetics for an increased price tag during one week of the event. This somewhat solved the problem of having forced loot box randomization, but it did nothing to calm the waters of animosity towards what can really only be categorized as pure arrogance and greed. This is where things truly spilled over. A couple of Respawn employees took to Reddit to vocalize their frustration as they internalized the criticism of this new cosmetic event, and their responses are going to serve as a patient zero, if you will, for my new classification of toxic developer entitlement. 
Among the responses were lines like, I've been in the industry long enough to remember when players weren't complete asshats to developers and it was pretty neat. I forged a bunch of long-lasting relationships from back then, would be awesome to get back there, and not engaging with toxic people or asking how high when a mob screams jump is hopefully a start. Another read in reference to a player who had vocalized his criticism of the greedy event practice. Hey everyone, found the dick I was talking about. Guess what? I didn't even read your comment except for the first sentence and last. This kind of garbage doesn't warrant a reply, but lucky for you, I already made a comment about this earlier. Go find it. Furthermore, there was an expansion to refer to players that do not purchase microtransactions as freeloaders with the following. There is a wealth of data available on how monetization works in free-to-play games, and we ourselves have run tests by putting skins on sale in the store. The amount of people who spend is crazy low. Most of y'all are freeloaders, and we love that, and a change in price doesn't move the needle. There is a pathetic attempt at distancing the term freeloader from its negative connotation, which is an inherent negative connotation, I might add, but the insinuation is clear. Respawn developers have internalized the backlash as a function of their current price point, placed above and beyond anything that can be considered reasonable or fair in this instance, and were striking back at their own community who were not eating up their greedy decisions and instead were fighting for their own consumer interests. A final point of note is the blanket statement insulting gamers as a demographic. I think technically I was calling gamers dicks. I dunno, I had a spicy lunch. Feeling it. This is a crippled attempt at superiority by humor, when the reality is that this developer is a mentally inadequate professional, and I say that with the highest possible emphasis on the quotation marks here, who was and is incapable of differentiating between consumer distrust as a function of being consistently price gouged and genuine animosity towards a creative team. To understand why developers have sacrificed certain artistic freedoms and creative liberties, we need to examine gaming as an industry. I make every single attempt possible to advocate for the process of creative freedom in gaming development, but the truth is, this is a highly commercialized industry. When I or anyone else compares games to artwork, this is not true in a universal sense. The fact is, video games are a highly commercialized product created, designed, and constructed to be profitable within a certain demographic. Individual artistic creation is not commercialized to such an extreme. It can be created with a secondary desire of selling it to a willing buyer, but the primary function is creativity unfettered by the restraint of anything other than an artist's mind and body. This is not true of mainstream video games. There are exceptions to this, somewhat. Certain indie projects, or on rare occasion a more mainstream game, is born purely from the creative mind of an artistic expressionist, and the resulting work is built with a secondary desire to perhaps recoup development cost or appeal to a demographic of gamers, but the vast majority are designed specifically to be sold, marketed, advertised, and dispersed on a massive scale which excludes them from certain standard artistic freedoms. This is where it gets a little bit messy. I will still advocate for the preservation of artistic freedom, even when that freedom is by definition restricted as a result of its environment, but the issues we are beginning to see exemplified by Respawn as a studio are only going to get worse, and are an example of creative workers being unable to differentiate between fiscal motivations and creative criticism. Another perfect example of toxic developer entitlement is Ooblets. I recently covered this event in a separate video, but the basic gist is that an indie project called Ooblets announced its decision to move to the Epic Store exclusively by sarcastically demeaning its own player base and insinuating a sense of gamer entitlement that they had no obligation to adhere to. The result was widespread backlash very quickly as the very customer base that this game was deliberately made to profit from was insulted and demeaned for not conforming in a vocal and willing fashion to a developer decision that was in direct conflict with their own ability to comfortably play the game the way they wanted to, a game commercialized with the supreme directive of profiting from them. This brings us to the similarities between these two circumstances. In both cases, a retrofitted defense was spun up which claims maximum victimhood and admonishes gamer response by claiming threats, harassment, and a veritable word soup of please pity me rhetoric. This is the moment to firmly express that no one should be going out of their way to send threatening or hateful messages to others as a result of completely disconnected events. Not only does it have no positive impact whatsoever, it also gives them ammunition to play into this metacritic victimhood narrative where the desire is to achieve maximum points, thereby hopefully discrediting anything anyone says in contrast. Yesterday, CEO of Respawn Vince Zampella released a statement regarding the recent backlash towards Respawn which underlines the victimhood narrative. 
On Friday, we gave Apex fans an update on how we were changing the Iron Crown event. Some of the team then joined a discussion with our community on Reddit, and things got to a pretty bad place. Some of our folks crossed the line with their comments, and that's not how we want Respawn to be represented. I apologize to any of our fans that were offended. I will always stand behind the team here at Respawn and support them on speaking out against some of the toxic and nasty comments being directed at them, including everything from death threats to comments aimed at their family and loved ones, but we shouldn't contribute to it when we do comment and add to the very thing we want to prevent. We need to lead by example. Last week, we didn't do that, and going forward, we will be better. Having an open, healthy relationship with our community is incredibly important to all of us at Respawn. Yet again, we can see a deliberate subterfuge as the attempt is made to layer in a claim of threats and harassment towards disconnected third parties in an endeavor to discredit user animosity. The truth of the matter is, any public figure on the internet at all will be the recipient of such activity at one point or another. I myself have received innumerable messages of anger and hatred as a result of my commentary on video games. Some wish a horrific disease upon me, others make insinuations that they themselves will take matters into their own hands to silence my voice, and I can comfortably guarantee that the vocal feedback of that nature I have received over the years far surpasses anything that these respawn devs have had to deal with, but the actual severity, intent, or credibility of this misplaced personal backlash isn't the point. The point is to out-victim your your opponent and discredit their position. The fallacy of gamer entitlement is paradoxical because that entitlement is an accurate concern for the commercialized product made with the deliberate intention of being worth their money, likely not meeting advertised expectations. The real issue is developer entitlement, as a seemingly growing number of creative professionals in the industry lose sight of the fact that financial infrastructure as well as fiscally motivated monetization techniques are being used in such a detrimental way that it subtracts from a gamer's ability to enjoy the product or participate within the full scope of their desires. This would be acceptable and unworthy of acknowledgement if video games were similar to other art forms, with a primary motivation of creative freedom. But because of the commercialized format, a player being unable to participate to their fullest desire in a product made deliberately to extract their funds that they paid for is no longer as easy to brush aside. Gamers have now been conditioned over the past few years to expect predation and greed. When that expected outcome presents itself, which happens all too often, they are now reacting with increasingly familiar animosity. And the expectation that a product designed to be worth your money as a consumer, that is not toxic entitlement at all. It is the pursuit of one's own self-interest. However, the expectation that an audience will deviate from their own self-interest when they are the ones paying money to the benefit of all creative parties involved is nothing short of illogical and idiotic. Developers failing to differentiate between a desire to preserve fair and consumer-friendly monetization standards and a completely disconnected and hardly ever present disdain for the artistic product itself with the expectation that their consumers should simply bow to the agenda, even to their own detriment, that is toxic behavior. Regardless of how we ended up here, this is the truth of the landscape. Games are often launching broken and unfinished. If you purchased a product from Ikea, or any other store for that matter, such as a piece of furniture with an interesting and sculpted headboard or something like that, but the headboard was broken upon closer inspection, having paid for that product, you as the consumer would have every right to be upset. And the artist behind that initial sculpture, due to it being highly commercialized and no longer hinging on their creative ego, would not be taking to Reddit to decry these unhappy consumers as toxic or entitled. But in the video game space, somehow, I'm not sure why, we have developers demonizing consumers for being at odds with the rapidly deteriorating state of monetization. It is unfounded, illogical, and unacceptable. That's it for today, though. None of this is to say that there are not tens of thousands of passionate, amazing, and creative developers out there who are worthy of every bit of support we can give and so much more. But the straw man myth of toxic gamer entitlement that is peddled by the mainstream media and now, seemingly, more and more developers as well, needed to be addressed because it is intellectually dishonest propaganda. If you want to support, there are links down below. The goal is to rely more on Patreon, I guess, as YouTube falls apart at the seams, and also merch, stuff like that, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching, and have a nice night.